Hello! Welcome back to another episode of Doodling Through Education. For my Classical Conversations students, this is a supplementary video for the Foundation's Science Memory Work for Week 14. For everybody else, today is a science lesson um, about uh, the states of matter. We are going to be talking about solids, liquids, gases, and plasma today. And then we are also going to briefly talk about how these states of matter change into another state. So stay tuned and stay with me and let's go ahead and start doodling. Our first state of matter that we're going to discuss is the solid state. The main characteristic of a solid is that it is anything that holds its shape. This can include things that are soft or hard or small or big. Some examples include rocks, diamonds, fur on animals, bones, wood, etc. It just has to hold its shape. The reason that a solid holds its shape is because the molecules that make them are tightly packed together and not very active, so they cannot move much. Solids can be made of many things and sometimes can be a mixture of several things. An example of a mixture that is a solid is granite. On the other end of the spectrum, there are things called crystals. Crystals are solids that are organized in a very specific repeating pattern structure called a crystal lattice. Our next state of matter is the liquid state. Liquids are found between the solid and gas states. Examples of liquids at room temperature include water, blood, or even honey. The main characteristic of a liquid is that they fill the container that they are placed in. It's important to note that when you pour liquid into a container, you may notice that the surface of it is flat. This is due to gravity pulling on the liquid molecules. Solids are locked together and you have to force them apart. Gases, which we'll talk about in a second, bounce everywhere and spread out. But most liquids want to stick together because of cohesiveness. And this just means sticky forces that pull the molecules together. For example, if you place a drop of water on a solid surface, you will see it stay together as a drop. These are those cohesive forces keeping the drop from spreading out. The next state of matter we are going to talk about today are gases. Gases are everywhere and in fact, our atmosphere is made up of gases too. Gases can fill a container of any size or shape. It doesn't matter how big the container or how small the container is. The molecules spread out to fill the whole space equally. Think about a balloon. No matter what shape you make the balloon, even if it is the shape of a monkey or the shape of a sword or the shape of a lion, the molecules are spread equally throughout the entire shape. Liquids, on the other hand, can only fill the bottom of a container, but gases can fill it entirely. The shape of liquids is very dependent on gravity, while less dense gases are light enough to have more freedom to move. And last, we are going to talk about the plasma phase. Plasmas are a lot like gases, but the atoms are different. So what makes it up is different because they are made up of free electrons and ions of an element such as neon. 
You don't find naturally occurring plasmas too often when you walk around. They aren't things that happen regularly on Earth. Plasma is different from a gas because it is made up of groups of positively and negatively charged particles. While natural plasmas aren't found around you that often, man-made plasmas are everywhere. Some examples of these are fluorescent light bulbs. This is where electricity flows through a tube where the light is turned on. The electricity acts as that energy source that we need and charges up the gas. This charging and exciting of the atoms creates growing plasma inside the tube. The electricity helps to strip the gas molecules of their electrons. Another example of plasma is a neon sign. Just like a fluorescent light, neon signs are glass tubes also that are filled with gas. When the light is turned on, the electricity flows through that tube. The electricity charges the gas and creates plasma inside of the tube. The plasma glows a special color depending on what kind of gas is inside. Now, all matter can move from one state to another, but how do these different types of matter do this? This happens when the energy or pressure and the temperature is either increased or decreased. Some types of matter don't easily change and extreme temperature or pressure changes are needed. So it's important to note that the amount of temperature change or energy change is different depending on the type of matter you are dealing with. Generally speaking, as the temperature and energy increases, solids change to liquids, which then change to gases, which then change to plasma. There are several terms that scientists use when talking about these phase changes, and they include when a solid changes to a liquid, this is called melting. When a liquid changes to a gas, this is called vaporization. When a gas changes to plasma, this is called ionization. Then going back down, when a plasma changes to a gas, this is called deionization. When a gas changes to a liquid, this is called condensation. And when a liquid changes to a solid, this is called freezing. So imagine there's a cube of ice sitting on a counter. It wants to become a liquid, but it needs some energy. So what could that be? Hmm, well heat is probably the easiest energy you can use for this change. The atoms in a liquid have more energy than the atoms in a solid. So as you heat the ice cube up, it is adding energy, so it is changing from a solid to a liquid. There is a special temperature for every substance called the melting point. When a solid reaches the temperature of its melting point, it can become a liquid. So for example, for water, the temperature needs to be a little over zero degrees Celsius for it to melt. When there is a liquid and you want it to become a gas, you need to find a lot of energy. Once you can direct that energy into the molecules, they will start to vibrate. If they vibrate enough, they can escape the limitations of being a liquid and become a gas. When you reach this boiling point, the molecules in the system have enough energy to become a gas. Let's finish up by imagining you have a gas like neon and you want it to become a plasma. As a gas, it's already halfway there, but you still need to tear off a bunch of electrons from its atoms. The gas needs to ionize. Electrons have a negative charge, 
Eventually, you'll have groups of positively and negatively charged particles in almost equal concentrations. They wind up in a big plasma ball. Because the positive and negative charges are in equal amounts, the charge of the entire plasma is close to what is called neutral. Neutral happens when a whole bunch of positive particles cancel out the charges of an equal bunch of negatively charged particles. And then you get plasma. And that is it for our States of Matter episode today. I hope you enjoyed learning about the States of Matter. Go and look around your home and see if you can find these different things. Now you may not have um, the plasma state in your house, but next time you go driving around, you should be able to see some plasma signs. And you, and you now know that that is also a state of matter. So look around your house, see if you can find something that is a solid, that is a liquid, and that is a gas. And remember to subscribe to the Doodling Through Education YouTube channel so you don't miss a single episode. And on that note, be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.